Allie's favorite toys today? I was. I brought these rings, which she likes. Oh, great. And this is her favorite ball. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It's important to use toys that she prefers because they're going to act as natural reinforcers. Okay. So a reinforcer is something that encourages a certain behavior. Um, the thought is that by using one of her preferred toys that she's going to be more likely to pay attention to it and engage with it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So let's begin. We're going to hop right into phase one. Um, like you may have read in the pamphlet I provided um, to you last time, the goal for phase one is for Sally to pay attention to a toy that you're also interested in, a toy that you're going to present to her. So which one out of these do you think she's more um, into? I think she really likes the ball. Okay, great. So what you're going to do is you're going to give her the toy and you're actually going to physically place her hand on the ball. Um, you can say, Sally, look at the ball. Um, and the purpose of this physical redirection is to establish joint attention by actually engaging her in the ball. And so hopefully what she's going to turn her gaze and look at it. The hope is for five seconds, but we'll see what happens. And if she does look at the ball, you can offer her social praise and let her either play with the ball or the toy that she's playing with currently. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sally, look at the ball. I don't think it works. All right, so I'm going to try this exercise again, and I'm going to offer a little more prompting, and we'll see if we can get her to look at the ball. Sally, look at the ball. Look at the red ball. The red ball is a bouncing. Ball. Sally, you're bouncing the red ball. It went great. We work on it a lot at home, and I think we've mastered it by now. Awesome. So phase two is a lot like phase one, except for this time, instead of physically moving her hand to the new object, we're going to present the object in front of her and tap on it. Okay. And we're not going to keep her from playing with the one that she's got, but if she does look at this one, um, and you want her engaged to it for five seconds, then you can either give it to her to play with, or she can play with what she's already got. Okay. Sally. Mastered phase two, we're going to move on to phase three, okay. which is seeing if you can get Sally's attention just by showing her a toy while she's playing with something else. Okay. And you can do this by playing with it yourself in front of her or by talking about it, sort of narrating what you're doing. Okay, maybe try and get her attention by talking about the ball. Okay. Oh, Sally, check it out. I'm bouncing the ball. The ball goes up and down. Bounce, bounce. Great, cool. since you got her attention, let her play with it for a minute. Okay, Sally. So do you remember how we've been working on getting Sally to make eye contact with you? Uh -huh. Great, so in phase four, we're gonna use that eye contact, we're gonna establish the eye contact, and then you're gonna point to a toy that's out of reach to see if she can then follow your point. Sally, <gasps> look, rings. This time I'm gonna kinda offer her a physical problem physically turn her body towards towards your point and we're gonna see if she can look at those rings over there. Look! Sally! Rings! Oh look. Great. So now that she she looked at your point, we're gonna you can offer her both toys. This face is a lot like the last one we did with the pointing. Um, but this time we're gonna see if we can get Sally to follow a more subtle cue, which is eye gaze. And once she makes eye contact with you, you're going to turn your entire face and your eye gaze to, we're going to use these rings over here that she really likes, okay. um, and see if you can get her to follow your gaze. Sally! Sally, look! Awesome! Since she looked at your gaze, you can play with the ring. 